everyone. My name is Lonnie. I am Lady Braven of the Pride, and I am passionate about inspiring and empowering others to be brave and stand up for themselves in a time of government corruption and medical fraud. I am also the producer and publisher of the Brave Book series. And today I have somebody very special and important and dear to my heart on to have a conversation about her chapter in The Brave Ascending Human Consciousness. Everybody welcome Naomi Witcherly. I have to tell you a little bit about this beautiful soul. Um, just reading her description off of her uh, website, she is the CEO of Bliss, The Bliss Life. She is a certified life coach and she helps people with self-love, health, wellness, personal growth and happiness. In her own words, she says, I help women embark on the most courageous journey of radical self-love to show them how to access their inner wisdom to create a life by design. I love that. I also have to tell you that she is one of my dearest and closest friends on this planet. And um, she is a lifelong soul sister and my own personal angel. So how lucky am I to have this beautiful soul on uh, this lifelong journey alongside me. So everybody welcome Naomi Witcherly. Naomi, thank, thank you. you for being here. Oh my gosh, that brought tears to my eyes. That just hit me right in the heart. Thank you for such a beautiful, warm opening. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't read my my little mission statement for a long time. So that kind of hit me in my heart a bit there too. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. And um, earlier this year, actually, it was last year when I was producing and putting together uh, all of the authors for The Brave Ascending Human Consciousness. And because you've been such a positive influence in my life and my own personal angel, I knew that you had a lot to say. We resonate on so many different things. We're on the same page with, when it comes to spirituality and our understanding of being a light worker and um, how to overcome challenges and adversity in life. So I knew that you would have a lot to say about ascending human consciousness. And I'm so grateful that you shared your story in the book. Um, in the book, you are chapter number 10. And it is called, your chapter is called Taming Dragons, A Tale of Healing with Horses. So to start off, I want everybody to really read all of these chapters. So I don't want to give too, too much away, but to start off, could you please tell us how you came up with the title for your chapter? So there's a little bit of history there with dragons that I actually never really um, was able to, I, I didn't recognize it until fairly recently. Um, my dad loved dragons. He owned, he purchased so many dragon statues and, um, and he was just fascinated with dragons. And I loved that he loved dragons, but I never really made an association with it. And so my dad passed away um, quite a few years ago now. And I had his dragons in, in a box all wrapped up. And I was listening to an audio book, um, uh, Waking Up in 5D. And she spoke about dragons in, um, in one of her chapters. And it just lit me up. And it felt like all of a sudden, all of this knowing just kind of landed in my soul, in my body. And it kind of, I made all of these, um, I made all these realizations about my dad just kind of setting the stage for dragons in my life. And so um, dragons, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk whether they're real or not, but there's so many, um, there's so many pieces of art and history in you know, buildings, museums, things like that, that uh, showcase dragons. And so it's, you know, very possible that they were a part of our history at one point um, from another dimension. So the relevance of dragons is that they help us develop our authenticity and they help us to see clearly. So they represent clarity. Mm -hmm. And I just get goosies actually just talking about it right now because, um, 
one interesting piece for me about how horses are kind of associated in this is when I've been around horses most of my life, uh, just over 30 years now, and um, a, uh, I rescued a horse a few years ago. Her name's Classy. And right from the get-go, she was spicy and opinionated and just so unique, but nobody could really nobody knew what to do with her. And so she wound up in rescue a few times and, and she had all these layers on her. And so when she came into my life, um, I was ready to take her on as she was. And I wanted her to stay herself, but learn how to cooperate with me so that we could have a happy life together. And so I always nicknamed her my dragon girl. And so that's kind of how these pieces all came together. And mm -hmm. You know, Classy has been, I've gone through a lot of personal growth in my life. I have, um, you know, I've been focusing on my personal growth journey, especially the last mm, over 10 years or so now. And she has taught me more than any human teacher has. She has encouraged me to dig deeper. And so that's where the whole Taming Dragons piece came in for me because she is now just so deeply connected in my soul and she has become such a lovely lovely um entity in my life mm -hmm. and she's no longer deemed dangerous or anything like that and we communicate like you wouldn't believe and so that's why i felt like taming dragons and the work i do with horses to help people um you know build their authentic power and um sharpen their their own personal growth skills like um just awareness and boundaries and, and it's amazing how horses help us develop all of these skills right and um i 100 percent agree actually i think you're the one that recommended that book to me waking up in 5d and i loved the book as i love absolutely everything that you've ever recommended to me um, but chapter 11 was all about dragons yes. and I found that chapter so fascinating and empowering and I have been utilizing my own personal dragons like you wouldn't believe in the last year, like the things that I have accomplished and gotten away with because I've called upon my dragons. Yeah, and it's an amazing skill to once you've read uh, read or listen to that chapter um, to learn how to call forth your dragons to clear the path for you and um, it, it's actually really a beautiful thing to call in your dragons and, and help them assist you in life yeah love it actually um, for anybody interested I'll put a link about waking up in 5d in the description below because I highly recommend it mm -hmm. um, for anybody that's interested in calling upon their dragons but for now um back to this chapter chapter number 10 it's called taming dragons a tale of healing with horses like i said i'm not going to give too much of it away but i did want to read this one paragraph because it really it was really potent and it really resonated with me great okay one of the most profound lessons i have learned and phil facilitated through healing journeys with horses is the power and importance of the heart. I have become acutely aware of how shut down and guarded so many of us, especially women, have become. We have been living in a masculine driven world for a very long time now, and I feel we need a rising presence of the divine feminine. We need nurturing and love to heal the planet and create a different set point as we shift out of the three duality 3D paradigm and ascend into oneness, into love, into the fifth dimensional existence. Absolutely love that. And of course, I Thank agree um, wholeheartedly. Um, I wanted to ask you, why do you believe that calling upon our divine guidance um, is so important at this particular time with everything happening in the world, all of the chaos, all of the confusion, all of the corruption, um, people don't know who to trust, they don't know who to listen to. Why is divine guidance so important right now? Mm, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, what comes to my mind um, immediately is that we're directly connected to source. 
and source gives us our uniqueness and our intuition. And I think we have been so enslaved and so suppressed that we don't even realize, well, not all of us, but many of us don't even realize how incredibly powerful we are, how unique we are. And we just have been living this mediocre, monotonous life for so long. And I really think that it's our uniqueness, our personal power, our connection to source that is going to be a turning point for us to get out of this mm -hmm. and recognizing that we have this incredible power and we are you know we don't need to be enslaved any longer um and i just think that you know community and re recognizing that is going to really create a well it's going to be one of the things that's going to create a big change um of, from what's going on right now yeah, absolutely. And with regards to developing our intuition and activating our divine feminine, how do you think that healing with horses or working with horses can help um, mm -hmm. with that process? So horse working with horses is a really unique and very potent opportunity to, first of all, be, be very vulnerable. So when you work with horses, they don't have the frontal lobe development that we do where we kind of strategize and we can, you know, create like jealousy and, and we, you know, those kind of, um, those kind of feelings. So horses are very in the moment and they're non-judgmental. So when we're working with horses and we come in with an energy that they feel might be erratic, whether it's maybe too high and happy, but not authentic happiness, more of a nervous, sort of state, um, or we come in, you know, just if we're not congruent with how we're feeling, they feel this erraticness from us that they can't quite read. So for horses, they're a sensory animal. And so they are deeply connected to knowing their environment. They can feel and hear our heartbeat from so far away. They sense things that we don't quite sense. And so they give instant and honest feedback when we're working with them. And so the one great thing about them though too is as soon as we make a shift, they then settle in and they accept that shift. They don't carry resentment and things like that. And so working with horses is such an instant opportunity to be able to create self-awareness and check ourselves, check really? how we're feeling. Yeah, and so that's why they're such a great conduit for this work. And they're so, so patient with us. Right, and did you say that horses were seventh or eighth dimensional beings? Eighth dimensional beings, eighth? yeah. Okay, yeah. can you explain yeah. a little bit of what that means? Yeah, so that is, um, that is sort of a, a dimension of oneness. So because horses are herd animals, um, they don't really do well on their own. Now, they will. We have in, you know, domestication, we have put them in situations where they, you know, live by themselves sometimes. But ultimately, they are an animal that um, create, like, likes to live with synergy and synchronicity. They have very strong mirror neurons. And so they are, they, they live um, in, a, in a herd mentality where they're all very relevant to each other and that social dynamic. And so they don't operate or see the world as we do in this, you know, third density um, environment. And so it's really interesting. I, um, so I'm still learning a lot of the depths of what it means for them to uh, be an eight dimensional being. Um, so I'm still on the journey of knowing and understanding. And this is, you know, horses have just encouraged me to learn so much more outside of my little bubble and my little realm. Um, in my in the chapter in the book, um, I give a little bit of a detailed explanation of what it means to be eighth dimensional. So I really would encourage people to go in and have a read of that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. I mean, these are the kind of stories that really inspire people and give them information that they probably wouldn't have other access to. Um, and this is why it's so important. Every story in this book is meant to inspire, encourage, and empower people during this time, this particular time. 
And from your perspective of everything happening, happening in the world with all of the lies and the corruption and the chaos, what are you focused on and what would you recommend that others focus on at this particular time moving forward? Well, one of the big biggest things I'm finding right now is as much as the collective is important, I think it's really important that we be responsible for ourselves, for our energy, for our frequency, which affects the collective. Mm -hmm. I am focusing so much more on one-to-one -one stuff um, rather than bigger groups, um, just because the potency of it, and it's kind of like the spider web where you just kind of twang one thread of the spider web and it, you know, it creates that ripple effect. So too are, is, you know, is that true of us and what we do? And so this is where I really am encouraging people to, um, to take a deep dive into self and to create, you know, self-awareness and how you show up from day to day in every situation, notice the things that the little things that come in that kind of take you off your path, keep focusing on developing self because that is going to be the biggest thing that is going to affect the, you know, the global consciousness and the collective. Oh my God. I couldn't agree more. Thank you for saying it so perfectly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, just to let everybody know, what have you got going on at this particular time? Do you have any programs? Do you have any courses that you would like to tell people about? Yeah, um, right now I'm launching my spring and summer programs, um, my equine guided program. So I've got one of my flagship programs called the Return to Feminine, um, because as I've expressed, I really think that bringing forth our divine feminine and healing our wounds, opening our heart, receiving is so important right now. Um, so my return to feminine program is an equine guided program that helps us be vulnerable in a safe place and open our hearts to the wisdom of the horse and being in a safe environment to be able to bring that into their day to day life. So that's one of my favorite programs. Um, so I've got that going on right now. Um, I was going to kind of close up my one to ones. Um, you know, focus on a few other things, but I think one-to-one -one is really important right now. So I've decided to kind of keep my one-to-one -one coaching um, sessions open and available uh, for those who feel, you know, called to kind of dig deeper and, and get, um, I like to help people see their blind spots. That's the biggest thing because we don't realize how incredibly powerful, beautiful we are. We just kind of get tunnel visioned in our day to day activities and actions and doings, and we forget how powerful we are. And so that's what I like to support um, to bring those forth. Um, I'm just in the works of starting a podcast because through a lot of the transformation I've been going on uh, personally in the last couple of years, I've found my voice. Mm -hmm. I have been one who has supported and loved people. Um, for so long, but I've really struggled to have my own voice and speak up about it and create a platform and a space where people felt compelled to want to come to, you know, get their um, daily tips and, and, you know, activate their own personal power. So mm. I'm really working hard. I'm somebody who I like to walk the walk and talk the talk. I don't feel authentic unless I do. And so, um, yeah, just trying to bring my voice out in the world a lot more. So my podcast will be up and running fairly soon. And you can also just get any of uh, information about me, my coaching programs, because um, I, I do focus on nutrition and wellness. I really like to take a 360 approach because I believe everything's connected. And so we you know, I spent a lot of years working on one thing and neglecting other things. And I really like to bring it all together and create a healthy balance. So I've got a lot of info on my website that you can find there too. And your website is www.naomiwitcherly.com. And I'll yes. put all of that information in the links below. You're Thank also you. on Instagram at Naomi Witcherly. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And I just want to let everybody know that you have been such a, a pillar of strength and, um, and love in my life and that I would not be who I am today, whoever that is, I would not be the person that I am today. And I, I wouldn't have, um, developed some of, uh, the self-love and the courage and the compassion and the values that I really embrace, I wouldn't have developed those as um, easily. <laughs> no, it's not, it hasn't been easy. I don't know if that's the right it word. Not been easy. I think that you've no. really helped me along my journey. And I just want to let everybody know that, that you Thank are you. an integral part of my life and my own personal angel is what I like to call you. So I believe um, so very, very effective and potent information and wisdom that you share. And it all comes from a place of love. And that's what you are. Thank you. I appreciate that. I have always seen your heart. I have always felt your heart. I know the amazing person that you are. I experience it every single time we're you know, in connection together in so many different ways, whether we're having fun, we're, you know, on the horses, whatever it may be. I have always been very connected to you and I, I see your true heart, which I know um, you've been working on, you know, unguarding your heart and it's a tough journey and I support everything you do. And I want to say too, I am absolutely so grateful for this book series that you are fighting to get out there all the time. I love every piece of it. I love every ounce that you put into it, what it means, the color means of the covers, you know, of, of uh, identifying what chakras it's in relation to. This is an epic series. I really, really mean that. Uh, you have worked so hard and your work deserves to get out there and I support everything that you're doing and I love you dearly. And oh. I hope you know that. So <laughs> oh, I think you do. <laughs> oh, a little love fest over here. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming on and talking about the book and talking about what you're up to and what you've been doing. I love your perspective. I love our conversations. And I hope that others can take a little bit of wisdom from all of this as well. Thank you so much for having me. And really, especially thank you for asking me to contribute um you know there was a piece of of i actually really enjoyed the process of writing this chapter and then there was a piece of me afterwards that felt so much more bold and so much more accomplished for being able to put that chapter out into the world and i really hope that you know it's well received and and it uh, encourages people to kind of dig a little deeper and and just know that there's more than just one way to develop yourself there's multiple ways because i know there's a lot of people that have tried different courses and this and that and they say it doesn't work for them this is getting out in nature this is right. being with amazing animals that really draw out the best in us if we're if we are um willing to have encounters with them so thank you for letting me share that with everybody right and thank you yeah so the book is full of 20 chapters or maybe 19 chapters of all sorts of light workers and healers and spiritual intuitives and guides oracles empaths whatever you would like to call them i call them all family myself but different modalities like um breathwork facilitators and um, psychic mediums and in, just intuitives and they all have different methods and modalities for helping to raise our collective consciousness and elevate our vibration into the higher dimensions so that's why this book is so powerful and like naomi said it is purple because it is activating our third eye um, this is um, our pineal gland. This is where all of our perception comes from and our ability to see through all of the lies and discern for ourselves. And um, so this is meant to help activate your third eye or open your third eye and um, give, your, give you a broader perspective, a big picture perspective of what's actually happening on the planet right now for those who are concerned about um, what's going on. So 
Thank you very much for coming on today. And I want to encourage everyone to please like this video and share it with your friends that, that might need a little bit of this inspiration or guidance or encouragement to be brave during these times. Um, like, share, and subscribe to my channel. This is my new channel, and I'm going to be doing a lot of interviews. I have 60, well, between 50 and 60 authors to interview with regards to my book series. The other two books are here, Courage During COVID, Speaking Truth to Power. So I'm going to be interviewing a lot of these authors. And just so you know, I am also in the process of narrating the very first book, The Brave, Courage During COVID. So I'm going to be narrating a number of these stories and turning it into an audiobook because so many people have requested it requested that. Um, so that's very exciting. There's a lot of really good things coming and a lot to look forward to. But um, like I said, you can, you can uh, purchase any of the books on my website, which is ladybravenofthepride.com. And don't forget to like and share and subscribe because courage is contagious. Thank you very much for being here today. I love you to the moon. Love and you. We'll talk to you soon.